Hello, hello, everybody. This is Nazdarachi coming back at you again today with another Helldivers video. You know, I honestly never expected the first one to do as well as it did, but in the spirit of that, here we are again. I don't know if this one will do as well either, but uh, you know, we're just here for the fun of it. Now, what we're gonna be talking about today is just gonna be some general tips for the game. It's not really a numbered list or anything, but as you can see, I made it to level 50, and I'm gonna be sharing with you some of the hidden knowledge that I've found out through playing the game that has helped ease my experience. Some of this information will be relevant post-patch because it applies to the way I still currently play the game. So hopefully I'll have some things here that you may not already know about. If you're a very avid player of the game, some of these things you probably will know about, but other people that are newer, or maybe you just, you haven't heard something that's on here. So hopefully I'll be able to help you out a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and jump into a mission here. But the first thing that I just wanted to point out, which seems rather obvious, is the planets all have a day-night cycle. And when you're picking a mission, you can see that little moon next to that planet there, or that mission there, or the little sun next to this one. So not only can you tell by looking at the actual planet, but say you're kind of matching quickly and you just want to know what your lighting conditions are going to be. That's a really quick and easy way to tell whether you're going to be doing a night op or a daytime mission. With that being said, I'm going to pick a mission, jump right in and make a cut to the mission so we can get right to the tips for gameplay here. So I'll see you shortly. All right, so now that we are down on the battlefield here, we can test out and show you guys some of the tips. So the very first one is a very simple concept here. When you're going to resupply, of course we all love our grenades, our impact grenades for bile spewers and bug holes and robot factories, etc. But anyway, when you're going to resupply, there is a way you can pack an extra grenade. So if you have your grenade in hand when you go to resupply, assuming you have less than full grenades, so two or three is the target you're gonna wanna have here, and you resupply, you'll notice that now I have five grenades in my hand. I can stow that extra grenade, switch back to my gun, resume my combat ops, and just carry that extra grenade around with me. This has been a really helpful trick for me, especially on missions that have those bile spewing giant fat tick bugs, because the impact grenades will take them out in one hit. So packing the extra grenade when you're wandering into a bug nest or into a heavy combat situation can really be invaluable. Now this will work not only with the supplies that you drop in, but it'll also work with map found grenade replenishment boxes that you can pick up. And as well, it'll work with the armor that gives the passive for extra grenades. So I believe that one tops out at six grenades, but if you resupply when you're holding four or five, it should tip you over to seven, in which case you'll have an extra grenade there. Honestly, super useful, but let's get on to the next tip here. I don't even think I need a cut for this one. So we all know the breaker shotgun was nerfed in the, the last major patch that kind of altered things in the game. And that's left room for other guns to shine. And while I still think the breaker is a fabulous gun, I do think that it is not necessarily the blanket best gun for every general purpose situation anymore. And I found a lot of love with the pump shotguns. Now this one specifically is the one that shoots slugs. As you can see in front of us here, we have a Hive Defender and a Brood Commander here. Now this shotgun will make easy work of these guys. It'll shoot right through the armor of the Hive Defender here and he's quickly dead. Also with the Brood Commander, go for the head and legs, take off their head, they're basically on a timer till they die, and the legs will prevent them from getting to you. But something else I like about this gun, because you may be thinking, well, the pump shotgun's not so great when you are swarmed. But this gun can basically function at zero ammo due to animation canceling the reload, as you can see me doing right here. So, being a pump shotgun, it has a special feature like the revolver that when you reload this gun, you do not discard the extra ammo. So you can basically sit here and animation cancel your reloads when you're dealing with a bug breach or a big swarm and basically have effectively infinite ammo at least until the point where you run out of your stocks that your character is physically holding. I found that this tip makes the shotgun here, the pump one specifically, much more versatile because it has some of those auto-firing qualities that you're missing out on from the breaker that we just lost. And with the slugger version specifically, you get that punch through the medium armor here. So again, this trick really helps 
and you can do it on the go, just keep shooting. I find that it is a little bit easier to time the animation cancel for the reload when you're in first person, but you can do this in third person just fine. So as you can see, we took out all of those enemies that are following us with just this shotgun here, and we didn't have to use any orbitals or anything else to really support us, and we effectively never ran out of ammo for the combat anyway. Now, now we're gonna have to restock, but that's the second tip for you right there. Now for our next tip here, it involves the mech. Now there's nothing inherently super special about the mech itself, but something that I've figured out is if you are taking a lot of damage and your mech is around, something that I didn't know that you could do until I figured it out was that you can say dive into your mech, get into your mech at low health and have some protection, and then you can worry about stimming inside of your mech. Now the reason this is so great is because it can really help prevent you from dying if you happen to have a mech around and say you get out to close some bug holes without wasting some missiles or pick up some samples or whatever you happen to be doing you're outside of your mech and you get ambushed, you can heal while you're inside of your mech, which can really prevent you from potentially trying to run around frantically and heal. You know, It gives you a little bit of a minute to collect yourself, heal, at the cost of a little bit of mech armor. So that's something else that's extremely helpful that I've noticed if you are in fact having fun with the mech. Of course, you can also in the mech step on all these hazards with no problems. And you can see that we're rocking the shield bubble as well. Now this isn't something that I have extensively tested, but as you can see with the shield bubble still being on while we're inside of the mech, I do believe, and you could just see that it ran out, that wearing a shield bubble gives your mech some extra defenses against getting swarmed from taking damage there. Otherwise, why would the shield bubble be taking those hits and then dissipate and have to recharge? As you can see, my shield bubble's back up again. We'll let the robots hit me, or not the robots, sorry, we're fighting bugs. We'll let the bugs hit me some more and you're gonna see the shield is taking these hits and keeping my mech alive because the shield just dropped again. So something else, another tip that can be very helpful for you is if you are the mech pilot in your squad or if you're just playing with mechs, bringing the shield bubble can give your mech some extra survivability. Now generally, this isn't always helpful because the mech runs out of ammo a lot of times before it dies, but as you can see, when you're getting swarmed, that can definitely help out. Now we have a charger boy here right now. I'm actually gonna hop out of the mech and go to our next tip which is honestly great for newer players that want to play on a higher difficulty. Hey, no, 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 you get over here. Don't attack my mech. So how do you take out chargers now that the rail gun has been nerfed and say you don't want to run around and shoot them in the legs all the time? Say you want to be quick about it. And even a level one player could do this on a harder difficulty. So what you're going to want to do here is pack your starter default orbital precision strike. As you can see, I got that in my hand. You're gonna let the charger charge at you like you're a bull rider, and you're gonna let him run past you. As you can see, whenever he does that, he stops, he turns around, and he doesn't move until he lines up again for another charge. So just like a matador, just like we're in a bullfight here, we are gonna have our orbital precision in hand. We are going to let him run past to the point where he's not charging us anymore, and we're gonna let his charge be interrupted, and then we're gonna pitch this right at his booty hole. So let him, oh, he ran into a rock there. I mean, you could use the rock and his stun is the same thing, but I want an organic dodged matador style bull charge here that we can use. So he's gonna run past us there. He's gonna stop to turn around and he's not gonna charge at us until, well, we kind of ran out of time. We pushed it to the limit there, but as you can see, it killed him. Cause when he stops to turn around, that really uh, gives you enough time to get that orbital in there and get an instant free kill on a charger. Now this can work against two chargers as well, assuming they're both following you and not split up amongst your teammates. But it was a really helpful thing that I figured out, which let me ditch the railgun, honestly, in favor of some other orbitals to play with. Now you still might wanna bring the orbital rail cannon for dealing with bile titans, but for chargers, your default starter, level one precision orbital strike is all you need to effectively take them out. And we're gonna try and find another charger and do that again, make it look a little cleaner there. But let's continue on our mission here for giving you guys tips. Another quick little tip here is that mechs can stomp. I don't know if everyone's tried this, but if you melee in the mech, as you saw me right there, you can stomp on little bugs. 
And now for our next tip here. Now we are pretty well stocked up, but assuming we were out of everything, no grenades, all of our orbitals on cooldowns, nothing explosive and no way to take out this final hole. Well, you can use your support orbitals as weapons. That's right, weaponized support orbitals, like a resupply here. Let's go ahead and do some animation canceling and take out these guys that are following me here. And then I will talk to you about weaponized orbitals since we just got jumped in the middle of doing all this. Get out of here. I don't need that mech anymore anyway. It did have lots of missiles, but it is what it is. So anyway, assuming we have nothing left here. No way. We can call in a trusty resupply as our weapon. So we'll position it like so there. And the resupply in theory, will come down and act as an orbital and take out our pesky bug hole here. Something that I've found to be very useful and actually would have helped me out a lot in my last video is weaponizing your support call-ins. You can do this with the guns, you can do it with turrets, you can do it with resupplies. Whatever you need to turn into a weapon, do so in the name of democracy. Another tip we have here is say you end up finding yourself in a high spot and you think you're gonna die when you jump off. Well, I kind of covered this in my last video, but if you stim before you jump, you will have a small window of pretty much invulnerability, at least from you know low amounts of damage and fall damage. So we're gonna go ahead and stim here and then jump off. And as you can see, we didn't take any damage. So that's another useful feature of stims beyond them just obviously healing you, taking away your injuries, and completely refilling your stamina. So that little window of invulnerability is quite handy for surviving in sticky situations. Another helpful tip that I have for everybody is say you're on a mission, and as we can see, far off over there somewhere, there is a radar tower. It's an objective, but it's not on the map. So if you are able to ping an objective from a distance, you will now see that that objective has been added to the map when it was not there before. So that is an ex extremely helpful way to navigate the map, to spot things from far away, to put them on your map when they otherwise wouldn't be, to then plan your route through a map to get through and get all of your objectives done. Thought that that one was helpful and it, the game doesn't really tell you about that. So that's something you can do to help your team out or if you're playing in solo play. Get another one of our Matador Charger kills in here. Oh no, it's bouncing. Oh, let's get him to charge this way. <laughs> Still works. As you can see, one mag with a sniper rifle will take out the spore spewer. Another little tip I have for you guys is confusing enemy pathing with water. Sometimes, like here in this stalker nest, when I took it out, you'll find like a little lake here that's got some deep water. And as you can see, when I cross it, the monsters, the bug monsters over there, they won't cross. They're gonna start trying to path around to get me from the other side and I can just wax on them. Now, as soon as they start to come around this side, you can just hug this rock right here, duck back over to the other side, and it's similarly, they're not going to be able to get you from over there, run back over. And as you can see, with some ponds of deeper water, the bug's pathing is completely destroyed. So it's not going to work for all your shallow pools of water, but this is definitely a trick that can help you take out stalker nests and help keep you alive while kind of funneling enemies into a place where you want them to be. So you could take them out with every advantage that you possibly can. So as you can see, I've directed them all the long way around this lake, and as they're walking around them, I'm just gunning them all down here. And if I ever got overwhelmed, I could just skirt right on back over here, and they're not gonna be able to get me. As you can see, they're starting to path back around to the left now after a little bit of confusion. So just an easy way to kind of trap enemies and mow them down in situations where you might otherwise find yourself surrounded and kind of boned a little bit. So that's just something there that helpful that I felt like uh, was worth pointing out. Now, something else that I found incredibly useful has nothing to do with gameplay really itself, but by default, let's call in our sniper rifle here so I can show you what I'm talking about. By default, the weapon swapping in this game goes from your 
main weapon that you're using over to your pistol. Now, I find that to be not terribly useful, especially when I'm packing a second gun here. They want you to like long press to swap between your sniper and your primary weapon. But what I've done is just swap that. So in the options, you can quickly change it so that you can swap between your two primary weapons or your primary and your support weapon, if you will. And then you have to long press to then pull out your pistol. So that's something there that's worth noting. Long press swap makes it easier to swap between your two big guns when you are in desperate need. So weapon swap mode, Helldivers classic there. You can see it's in the options. I'm getting tore up out here, but I wanted to go ahead and throw that out there also. Look how I've got this one down. My dude is... He died there, but as you can see, I was just reloading and shooting nonstop. So another helpful tip I have for you guys is probably specific to rocking the shield barrier, but not completely. So you can, of course, drop items in this game. If you bring up your inventory options, you can drop your backpack, you can drop your samples, you can drop your support weapon, etc. So some times where this has been extremely useful for me, which I'll try and replicate here, are one... If you are near the extract at any point in your loop through the map and you're carrying samples, you can obviously drop your samples at the landing spot where you're going to be extracting, and they will generally stay there until the end of the mission. I've never had them despawn or fall through the map or anything like that. So if you're worried about, let's say, running into these eggs right here and getting killed and not being able to extract with your samples, you can drop your samples right there. Another pretty critical usage of the drop function is say you're rocking a shield bubble like I am and you happen to stick yourself with a supply drop. Normally this would be like instant death and of course I missed right there. Of course I did. Let's see, can I call down? I can call down the sniper rifle. But normally that would be instant death as it's going to stick to your barrier and um, yeah, it's basically going to kill you. So it kind of randomly happens. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to replicate it here with the sniper rifle and I don't wanna to wait to find out. But if you ever find that you get stuck by your own support incoming, I don't know if they patched it, maybe you can't anymore, but you can quickly drop the backpack and run away from it. And then this, the supply drop will fall on that and not you. Now that's only relevant with these supplies and support weapons with the blue beam. The red ones generally do not track, so you don't have to worry about those ones, like the orbital strikes and whatnot. But the blue ones do track, and it is possible for you to get stuck, unless they patched it before uh, I found out. So dropping the backpack will be a clutch function if you ever need to get out of being stuck by uh, what is otherwise an instant KO. The last tip I have for today, which I don't know if I'm gonna be able to capture in its perfection, is identifying what me and my friends have since dubbed, I know it sounds like a 12 year old saying this, but dick rock, all right? There's dick rock, butt plug rock, ball sack rock, whatever you wanna call it. I just dropped in on this mission, literally right here, and looked around, and I could see it right there. So 300 meters away, we're gonna run up to it. But the thing about this rock is, the samples, the pink ones of the super uranium variety, will always spawn at this rock. Now many of you may know this already, but the reason I bring it up is because there is on the map, and this is why I don't know if I'll be able to capture this, because it's, it's going to find everything, but there is a fake dick rock on the map. Oh, they're right here side by side. This is perfect. All right, so right here is the same rock, and I call this one fake dick rock. This is imposter dick rock. Imposter dick rock always, always, always will have this spiky, ugly, tumorous, ball sacky growth attached to it here. And I've found that these super samples for me are never at fake dick rock. Now you might see this rock off in the distance and you're like, oh, it's dick rock, I found it. And then you get there. And then for me, it's always ammo. Again, I've never found, no, I can't die right here. This is too convenient. But anyway, I've always found that fake dick rock never has anything. It's always at the real dick rock, which is further up the hill here. Just trying to ignore this stupid hunter who's already taken like two slugs. But yeah, so fake dick rock has the spikiness on it, but real dick rock up here 
this one will have our super uranium samples. Now, if you're playing on harder difficulties, there's still only one of these on the map. Like, I played on Insane and a little bit of Helldive, and just more samples will spawn around the base of it. So as you can see here, super uranium, always at Dick Rock, and just be on the lookout for that fake rock that's gonna try and get you excited and then deliver nothing. So yeah, that's about it for that tip right there. That's about all the tips that I had for y'all today. I mean, there's plenty more in the game. There's so much going on and so many different little systems and attention to detail going on in this game, but I didn't want to keep it too long. I figured I'd throw out at least 10-ish, or could have been give or take two or three things that really help me play the game and get through some really lesser known things as well and some simple things that you may have just overlooked. With that being said, I do hope that you appreciated and enjoyed this video, maybe learned a thing or two. Let me know down in the comments if there was anything in the video that you didn't already know, or if you are also a Helldiver Skull Admiral expert and you knew all of this stuff. With that being said, the final thing I'm gonna close out on here is the loadout that I'm currently running post-patch. Uh, I do like the light armor build. I do like the pump shotguns. I do like the machine gun secondary. Of course, the impact grenade, nothing has changed. But the armor that I'm really enjoying running is this light armor that's got the throwing range 30% buff and the 50% limb health. Not only does limb health help keep you alive during you know, strenuous situations, but the increased throwing range really helps you land your orbitals where you need to and from a further safer distance as well. Now there is a variant of the light armor that's got the 50% explosive resistance. I think that one's a top contender also, but out of all the armors that I have so far in the game, I've just been enjoying this one the most until the uh, Jinro, the Wolf Brigade armor that's leaked, that's up and coming. I'm probably at least gonna be using that helmet. I don't wanna spoil it for anyone that doesn't already know, but cool, cool new armor cosmetics up and coming. But with that being said, this is the one that I've been enjoying running the most. The orbitals now are a little bit more flexible. Again, I always bring the orbital rail if I know I'm gonna be fighting Titans. But even the default starter precision, as you saw, is great for matadoring and bullfighting with chargers and taking out holes and everything else. You can use your supplies when you need to in a pinch to take holes out and kill things if you absolutely have to. And uh, if you like this video, let me know. Maybe I'll make another one and try and collect some more tips. With that being said, I do hope you have a great day for democracy. Have a good one, and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.